Hello, and welcome to this MathWorks webinar. My name is Rick Gentile, and I'm the Technical Marketing Manager for the Phased Array System Toolbox. In the next 35 minutes or so, we'll talk about radar system design for advanced driver assistance systems. We'll see how the Phased Array System Toolbox and other MathWorks tools can help you design, model, and simulate ADAS radar systems. In addition, we'll take a look at how these types of models can be integrated into larger systems. Before we start, I'd like to make a few announcements on the logistics of this session. These slides and a recording of this webinar will be made available within a few days. The examples shown during this presentation are based directly on those shipping with the Phased Array System Toolbox, and they will be uploaded to MATLAB Central. I'll show you where you'll be able to download a trial license from our product homepage to try them yourselves. Of course, if you have any questions concerning this presentation or any related topics, please feel free to send me an email. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. This webinar is organized uh, to show you how ADAS radar systems can be designed, modeled, and integrated at the system level. I'll first start with a quick background and provide some motivation for building ADAS radar applications. I'll then walk through the key aspects of radar models and how they relate to ADAS applications. Now, The main portion of this webinar will be shown within the Simulink environment using both a long-range and a short-range radar model to demonstrate how you can design and model your radar systems. I'll demonstrate how to integrate these types of models at the system level as well. The first example is built up as a long-range system using a complete adaptive cruise control system. The second example is based on a short-range radar which performs blind spot detection. I'd also like to go through a few additional examples which are related to ADAS applications that I think will be helpful to you. I'll then wrap up the session with a conclusion and then answer the questions you submitted. Let's review some background before we get started. You know, through a combination of legislative and consumer demand, vehicle safety continues to migrate to the forefront of system designs. And uh, automotive ADAS systems continue to expand in scope with every new model year. And with many designs, uh, vehicle safety through ADAS has really moved from passive warning uh, to active control, which also has at the same time driven up uh, sensor accuracy requirements. Now, the uh, radar sensor technology in ADAS uh, effectively uh, adds to the number of eyes that you have on the road when you're in an ADAS enabled vehicle. A radar has the advantage of being able to see even in conditions that are not friendly to a camera. Radar also provides the ability to measure speed and distance of objects with great precision. You can see there are many different applications for radar in ADAS. I show them here in terms of short, medium range, and long range systems. The main differences are based on the fact that the short range systems are lower power and typically have wider bandwidths because the higher range resolution is needed to more accurately measure the range at the short distances. And this is required uh, because in short range applications there's less time to respond and also may result in additional uh, false warnings if, if it's not as, as accurate. So, ADAS radar applications will likely evolve to take advantage of uh, things like beamforming in the future, uh, which is also part of the modeling capability of the phased array system toolbox. But in the upcoming examples, we'll stick to the single element systems. The radar models that we go through in this webinar are built in Simulink, and they also are available in MATLAB. We support both platforms because MATLAB is a great platform to develop sensing and control algorithms, and Simulink is a great platform to develop control algorithms and integrate sensing and control components of a system. We have tight integration between these environments, and we work to make it easy to use the MATLAB language within Simulink. Now, ADAS radar systems share many common attributes across the wide range of possible applications that we discussed in the previous slide. Take an active safety system such as adaptive cruise control, for example. We continue to see a trend towards using different sensing technologies such as vision and radar to get better reliability and more vehicle autonomy. Information extracted from these sensors needs to be fused, but it also needs to be fed back to control algorithms to ensure the vehicle takes the proper actions. And so all this has to work together in a, as a system, it being able to model each piece of the system and then put it together as a system, including all the control aspects. Now, in this webinar, we're going to focus on the radar portion of this challenge. So let's take a closer look around. Okay, in uh, designing radar systems, there's a few challenges and Part of the first challenge is, is putting together a faithful model uh, of the radar system itself. And we feel that these can be uh, nicely addressed with the, with the tools that we're uh, going to go through in this webinar. The first challenge is really uh, based on designing a radar component or system. And there are many aspects of the radar that need to be modeled and included in this uh, to make it useful. This includes modeling all the blocks in the radar, of course, but also the, the propagation path uh, and being able to model the targets and the objects that, you're, that are in the, view of, uh, the field of view of the radar. It also includes building optimal algorithms for your application, whether it's for detection or any other related uh, functionality. 
Now, once the radar component or system is developed, the next challenge is really to integrate it into a larger application or system. And as part of this phase of the workflow, you may validate the radar performance. You might look at what-if scenarios. There's a whole bunch of explorations that might need to be done. And when there's, a, uh, for example, anomalous data in a road test, you have a model to go back to and, and uh, see how, uh, where, where the problem might be. And uh, system design always includes making uh, cost versus performance trade-offs. And it's critical to be able to, especially in safety systems, to model off-the-shelf components with the greatest fidelity possible before making uh, the final design choices. And I'm going to show you a few examples uh, where this, uh, this can be very uh, valuable. OK, we're going to go through our first example. And we'll start with a long-range radar application uh, based on adaptive cruise control. Now the vehicle with the radar in this demo is using an FMCW radar to detect and calculate the distance to the vehicle in the lane directly in front of the radar. We've modeled an FMCW uh, radar in Simulink using the phased array system toolbox. We have the full radar model, including waveform generation, the transmitter, the receiver, the propagation, the signal processing. In this example, we'll also use Simulink to model the vehicle dynamics as part of the feedback loop. The ACC system ensures the vehicle proceeds at the directed speed until the car is in front of it is detected at a distance that's considered to be not safe. Now, once this condition is detected, the velocity of the ADAS-enabled vehicle is reduced until it is at the desired safe distance from the vehicle traveling in front of it. At that time, the safe at the time the safe distance is achieved, the ADAS-enabled vehicle then returns to its desired cruising speed. Now, after we walk through the radar model, we'll see a short visualization of this feedback system, which is driven, again, from the data generated as part of the radar model simulation. OK, let's, let's switch over to Simulink, and we'll take a look at the model and walk through how it works. OK, so we have the Adaptive Cruise Control System model here in Simulink. And this represents the full Adaptive Cruise Control System. Everything that's in blue is associated with the vehicle that has the radar and is going to be performing this adaptive cruise control. The yellow box includes all the vehicle modeling for the car in front that's being detected by the radar, as well as the full uh, wireless channel uh, model for the system. OK. So in this uh, example, in the velocity controller, we set a cruise velocity and a safe distance that we want to achieve in, uh, for this vehicle. And the vehicle starts in motion and uses the radar return to calculate the distance between the two vehicles. That safe distance is breached, then the vehicle uh, controller slows the vehicle down so the proper space is maintained between the two cars. Now uh, you can see here the transmitted signal comes out uh, into space, reflects off of the vehicle in front, and then the return signal comes back in through the receive chain into the radar here. I'm going to focus more in, in this block here in, in, uh, shortly. Uh, before I do, I want to show you that um, before this, this simulation gets run, there's a MATLAB file that gets run which sets up all of the parameters associated with this simulation. So that gets loaded in prior to uh, running the simulation. And when we run it, it digests those values and then starts the simulation model. I'd like to show you the radar system uh, first. Now the radar system, we've got a combination of blocks that we built as well as blocks that come off of the, of the simulating palette for the phased array system toolbox. For example, the FMCW is a block that has uh, all these parameters set up. Some of them come from the MATLAB setup file, but some of them you can um, pick as drop down pieces. And this really defines the waveform. And as we walk around here, you can see the waveform is generated, it's transmitted. That transmit block we showed in the previous, uh, previous view goes out into the free space model, propagates out reflects off the target and then comes back to the receiver, which comes back into the model over here. Each of these blocks uh, can be expanded. Uh, I'll show you the display here we get when we run. In this case, it's an FMCW spectrogram. Uh, but we see that the, the signal comes in through the transmitter. It's amplified. There's a gain associated with it and a peak power. And again, these are all phased array system blocks that are connected together. The signal travels through the transmitter. It's amplified, and it's uh, sent out the array uh, into uh, to be propagated in, in through space. Similar picture for the receiver and uh, there's a narrowband array that comes in. We model that uh, here and then the receiver preamp which also uh, models uh, noise at that source and um, that starts the, the receive chain. Now in the radar piece we're sending a signal out and we're receiving it and we're, we're de-chirping this by taking the reference of what we sent out in the transmit 
and uh, dechirping it with the uh, receive signal that comes back in as it's been propagated out and, and returned back off, off, the, off the object. We calculate the speed and range uh, information here and these are both used by the uh, ACC controller to determine whether or not uh, we're going the right, uh, you know, how far away we are from the, the, the object in front of us. And that's the, the heart of what's used in this uh, algorithm. These blocks of um, writing to the workspace allow you to, after the simulation is done, actually record each of the values in the simulation uh, to a MATLAB workspace where you can look at them, uh, debug, or uh, do further analysis on. And I'll use that uh, in when I visualize the simulation when I have to, uh, to show you how that works. So the, the bottom line here is that um, the full system is simulated. We're using the radar to get the range to detect an object and to get the range for it. But then we're also using that information in a full system control. Now, I've run the, uh, I showed you some of the um, plots inside here. There's a whole bunch of different ways to visualize the information. In this case, I've shown a FMCW spectrogram that was based on what was actually transmitted, the waveform that was transmitted. And then here is the dechirp signal, which uh, shows the, uh, the effects of dechirping the signal after it's hit the, uh, the vehicle in front. Now, the other uh, piece that I wanted to show you is that um, we can quickly visualize this piece here. And I'm going to run this display. This is um, 30 seconds of data that I've recorded uh, offline uh, based on this same simulation. And um, go ahead and run this now. And you can see what it's going to show here is the two vehicles. This is the vehicle with the ADAS uh, radar in it, and this is the vehicle ahead. And as it's running, you'll see. Uh, the red car speeding up and as the distance, the safe distance is detected here, you see that um, it wanted, wants to maintain the safe distance. So it actually slows down and the other car in front uh, speeds up. And so uh, once the distance is, has been uh, achieved, then the red car will speed up again as well. And uh, this just gives you an idea, first of all, that the radar model can be integrated into the full system simulation, but also you have a way to see how it works and see, you know, if it's doing what you expect it to do. And I'll show this in, in, uh, in the other examples as well. Okay, let's go back to the display. So early in this webinar, we discussed the advantage of being able to increase the level of fidelity in a model. In this next example, we have the same framework used in the ACC example, but we have substituted components in place of the RF chain. This is done using a product called SimRF in conjunction with the Phased Array System Toolbox. The basic components are shown on this slide, but it's easier to see within the Simulink example. So let's go there now. Okay, so this is the Adaptive Cruise Control System with SimRF. Now at this level in Simulink, it looks identical to the previous model that I showed you. The big difference with this model is that uh, what we do under, in the radar portion of the model, and I'll show you that right now. You'll notice that in the blue box here, we have components uh, which make up the model for the RF front end of the radar. And we leverage a product that we have called SimRF. And this product provides a component library and a simulation engine for designing RF systems. It includes things like amplifiers, mixers, S-parameter blocks, and other basic building blocks to design these kinds of systems. Now, if you recall in the previous example, instead of this blue box, we had a transmit box and a receive box. And within there, we had uh, a transmitter and array and then within the receive block we had a, an array and a uh, receiver preamplifier. And essentially what this blue box does is it consists of components that were pulled from the SimRF library in Simulink. And these blocks on the front end here just put them into the domain that uh, the SimRF um, can process. But each of these white blocks inside here are, are built from the library or taken from the library. And each one has a set of parameters in here that can be taken directly from the component data sheet to match the parameter. Now, why would we do this? Well, if we were considering putting together these components to build up the front end, we'd want to see how they perform and how they impact the overall system performance. And so by putting these uh, together and matching what each of the uh, vendors uh, specifies for each of these components, we can actually make it part of a, our, our system simulation and see if, for example, a, a product is going to work in, or impact the overall system performance of the radar. And just like in the other example that I showed you, we have ways to, the same kinds of ways to visualize and, and uh, look at the outputs and, and see how the system's performing.
So let's move on to the blind spot detection model. Again, as with the SIMRF example, we've used the long range radar example as a starting point here to show the commonality between the various models and showing how with some small changes you can adapt the, the basic uh, application model. So in this case, the main changes that we made to the model include the orientation of the radar. So instead of facing out the front of the vehicle, it's looking out towards the side uh, rear of the vehicle, looking at the blind spot. We also changed the positioning and velocity of the vehicles under, under simulation. And they're not, no longer in the same lane, but they're in uh, lanes right next to each other. And then we've updated the detection algorithm because the way we determine whether a car is in the blind spot or not varies from just detecting it from the front of the vehicle. And as I mentioned uh, earlier in the session, uh, the other main difference is lower transmit power for shorter distance, and then the higher range resolution for the distance accuracy. With that, let's go ahead and uh, move to the Simulink model for this one as well. Okay, so I've got the short range radar system up and running, and this is a uh, blind spot detection application. And as you'll see, it looks very similar to what we had in the previous example with the exception of the vehicle control blocks. Now because this is an active, this is not an active safety application, it's more of a warning system, we don't need to control the vehicle uh, dynamics in this model, so we've eliminated them. But as I open up the, this block here, this is really uh, the radar model of what, we're, what we showed earlier. And I think that it's, it's important to start with, I mentioned earlier that the short range systems uh, have the need for higher range resolution. So we've increased the bandwidth here, and that's made the range resolution go from one meter to a half a meter. We've also uh, reduced the max range from 100 meters to 25 meters to account for the short range system. And we've got the same FMCW block, a very similar radar subsystem block with the, with the transmit, the de-chirp, and the receive. A very similar uh, speed and reference range estimation block. We've added in a new detection block because we wanted to define what the blind spot was and we use the receive signal strength as well as the estimated range to come up with that. And sometimes people's definition of what a blind spot changes a little bit, so that's fairly flexible. You can you'll, you can uh, open this block and tune it to however you want this block to look like, but I included it here because when I show you the simulation you'll see this behavior as it enters this sort of blue zone. You'll, um, you'll see the warning come on. The last piece uh, that, I, that I have in here that's different is this range angle calculator, which is used to uh, help the simulation uh, operate with the radar that's not pointing out the front of the vehicle anymore, but it's sort of off to the rear angle. And that's used to help in that process. And so it, it feeds in. You can see the, the angle comes out here, and this angle is fed into the transmitter and receiver to make sure that um, we're evaluating the return at the uh, desired location. Okay, we're ready to visualize this. Prior to the webinar, I ran the simulation and saved the data to my uh, MATLAB directory. And in this simulation, I'm using that uh, data that I had previously collected through the simulation. So what I'm going to do is um, just show you the display here first. Let's see two main differences. In the upper left-hand uh, quadrant, we've got the different view of the two vehicles because uh, it's easier to see when the blue car enters the blind zone of the um, of the red car. Also on the bottom here we're just plotting the warning so uh, when it's in the blind spot it gives a warning when it's not in the blind spot it, it shuts the warning off. And what I'll do is I'll run this now and you can see as the vehicles uh, take their spot here the blue car is coming up and passing. As soon as it enters that zone that I showed you in the Simulink file uh, where it enters this zone here the blind spot is detected. A, a vehicle in the blind spot is detected and that's determined as I mentioned earlier by the range between the cars and also the signal strength of the return signal from the radar. Now, as I continue this uh, run, you'll see as soon as the blue vehicle enters the uh, portion where the driver can look out the window and see it, then the detection goes away. And again, that's that combination of signal strength and uh, rain that comes out of the model. Okay, now the examples we went through um, so far were all based on the same basic framework. And that's important because we want to show how straightforward it is to build up a basic model and then swap in different pieces to tailor the model to a specific application requirement. Next, I've included some additional features that I think will be very helpful in your design and modeling process. We'll take a look at two interactive apps for radar analysis, design, and visualization. We'll also look at how waveforms can be designed and swapped into a model to improve system performance. In the last example, we'll demonstrate our ability to increase the fidelity of the antenna model using the antenna toolbox. 
Now the Face Array System Toolbox comes with a set of apps that are very useful in analyzing, designing, and visualizing key components of a radar system. I picked two to show you because they complement the topics we covered so far, and the first app that I would like to show you is the Sensor Array Analyzer. It can be started from the Apps tab in MATLAB, or it can be launched using the command shown here. This app allows you to design, visualize a sensor array, and you can select the array and element type. In this example, I've selected the Uniform Linear Array with four elements. Now, each of these uh, apps allows you to generate related MATLAB code to realize your configuration and visualize it. You can see here that the uh, array geometry and the array response is actually plotted in here. And this is all interactive, so you can put the element spacing, uh, the frequencies, the propagation speed, the number of elements, and then select the visualization that you want. I've selected here the 3D array uh, directivity, but there's a whole bunch of other uh, possibilities to visualize, and I encourage you to, to try it out. In the next app is the Radar Waveform Analyzer app, and there's a similar workflow where you can set up the type of waveform and all the related parameters that go with it. In this example, I've selected the Linear FM waveform, and I've selected these different uh, parameters and have chosen to visualize this as a spectrum. Again, there's multiple uh, visualization options. And just like the other app, uh, it's interactive and it also allows you at the end to generate MATLAB code as an output, which can then be directly used in your project. In this next example, it's, uh, I want to show you how, quickly it is to, uh, how quick it is to change a waveform. Now the basic model should look fairly familiar to you. and it's a similar type flow with all the radar components, but in this case we've uh, got multiple objects in the field of view of the radar, and we've changed out the waveform to an MFSK waveform from Linear FM waveform. Now this waveform improves the performance uh, in, with there's multiple target, with there's multiple objects inside the field of view of the radar, and so in this model it's it's the same basic framework that we've talked about, but we've just plugged this block in, and you can see the block over here. This is the block in Simulink for the MFSK object that was um, put in place at the FMCW. Now, this last example shows how we can improve the model of the antenna that we're using in our system. This example requires the product called Antenna Toolbox, which works in conjunction with the Phase Array uh, System Toolbox in this example. It's based in MATLAB, and when you're getting started with your model, you may want to get up and running quickly. And to re represent this stage of the process, we start with a single element cosine structure just to get the visualization going. You can see in the top here the, is the cosine, and let's say that we want to modify the, the beam shape of the, of the array. Uh, we move to a, a 2x4 rectangular array, and again, it's a very quick process to change the array elements in the structure, and you can see here to visualize, we've gone from cosine to, uh, to cosine array. And, you know, th this is very quick and easy to get up and running. Now, let's say that you want to move to a more uh, complicated model, a more advanced model of the antenna. By using the antenna uh, toolbox, we can bring in a microstrip patch antenna as the phased array radiator. It, that, this is bringing it right into the model. And once again, it's easy to visualize uh, all of the performance of the antenna. And what I like about this as well is that you can then do your trade-offs visually. There's a whole bunch of different ways to uh, visualize the results and do direct comparisons between uh, each of the antenna structures. Now in this, this case I'm just showing the uh, comparison of the cosine array versus the, the, patch, uh, the patch array. So uh, the point here is that all of these are included in uh, today's uh, products and in this example it shows how you can combine the antenna toolbox with, with the phase array toolbox and, and come up with a better model. So as we look back on the radar modeling capabilities we've discussed in the webinar so far, it's a good time to point out that model-based design for ADAS provides you with an integrated workflow across all parts of your team. This can lead to increased collaboration across teams because everyone's working from the same MATLAB and Simulink-based executable spec. You've seen that from the building up the radar model. You've seen it from integrating into a larger system. This also allows you to leverage a range of other capabilities from the MathWorks, including code and HDL generation, as well as a variety of other uh, downstream uh, tools. Okay, well that brings us to the conclusion now. Uh, what have we seen so far? The Phased Array System Toolbox provides a, work, a framework for you to design, model, and simulate radar systems. You can optionally bring in SimRF and the Antenna Toolbox to improve the level of uh, model fidelity in very critical areas of RF and antenna design. 
You can integrate your design with other MATLAB toolboxes to speed up optimization, improve your phased array uh, radar algorithms. It's easy to model and simulate radar systems. Uh, you have great starting points that exist from examples that ship with the product. You can also take advantage of C and HDL code gen and implement uh, control code all in the same uh, basic system framework. You also, as you've seen many times, uh, the, you have the ability to visualize the results in, in a lot of different ways so that you can see uh, your design before you. We also know that ADAS is more than just radar, and uh, there's a similar capability for MathWorks for vision with, with the computer vision systems toolbox. Well, this brings us to the end of the presentation portion of the webinar, and I want to thank you for attending. For more information on the Phased Array System Toolbox, please explore the product page at the link that I show here. Uh, if you click on the Get Trial Software, you'll be able to explore uh, the apps and the examples that I've, that I've gone through today. Okay, thank you again for your time, and I'll invite you to try the Phased Array System Toolbox in your next design.